Welcome back to Fast Market, everyone. Kevin Hinks and Nathan Peterson back for our cash tag segment. Now let's bring in the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, Mr. Andy Swan, to the show. He's going to break down DraftKings for us. They have earnings coming up as well. Andy, if I could start out with a question, what is what is paralyzing or what is what's the Achilles heel on some of these casinos or gaming names? Why are their stocks doing so poorly? Is it just something as simple as competition? <laughs> yeah, it's it's really cutthroat competition. I think these companies have to give away, you know, so much money uh, and so much on these promos to try to get new users in the door that it's very difficult uh, for them to be. Uh, profitable. I think it's really kind of an arms race to the bottom in terms of, you know, who can put out the best promo uh, for the Super Bowl, who can put out the best promo for the World Cup, and it really eats it at earnings over time in a big way. So their marketing spend on these promos is absolutely uh, insane. If they could come to some sort of truce, I think everyone would be better off, but I don't really see that happening. And, and when we look at, you know, how the Super Bowl went for these companies, it was really very surprising for me to see FanDuel, you know, kind of edge out DraftKings in terms of the number of people talking about betting on those platforms. Uh, but really the biggest surprise was, you know, the, the nascent, uh, you know, kind of unidentifiable object up there at the top is, you know, Barstool and Penn Gaming really didn't get in on the action uh, at all. And that's that was true also coming off of the World Cup. And so I think uh, there's two companies in the mix. They're really battling each other, but both are spending tons of money to do it and really hurting their earnings and margins as a result. It's a market share grab type of thing that's going on right now. And that gets very, very expensive. The good news is the market is is growing. You know, the market for sp sports betting continues to grow. Consumer interest in sports betting continues to grow. And also the legalization continues to grow. I think we've got, you know, three, maybe four states that could uh, turn legal on sports betting over the next uh, next year in, in 2023. So there's a tailwind at the back of these guys, but they're really cutting each other's throats to get market share. And it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, kind of what's left when the market does mature. Hey Andy, uh, Nathan here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, you know, my questions are around that same line in terms of, you know, when I look at the chart and the mentions there, it looks like that how much of that is a result of basically the, the, the TAM that's growing within gambling in terms of the new adopters that are coming on board. And so you'd likely see that correlation with more mentions, but in that graphic, where's where's MGM, where's Caesars? Uh, there's, there's, you know, you could say that DraftKings does have um, brands in terms of recognition and so you, maybe some consumers feel safe having their money there or going through that platform but um, in terms of there's no differentiation in between of uh, getting those uh, the same product there you're going to get essentially the same spread there might be uh, some yep. half a point to a point shed here and there uh, but where are those other competitors and is that a danger for a company like DraftKings in the, in the sense that they're going to have to up their promos in order to attract uh, their customer base? Yeah, I think that's the biggest threat for both of these companies, FanDuel and DraftKings, is, you know, how much they have to go out of the way to make to differentiate their product. And really, that comes down to giving away money uh, because they can't change. Like you said, you know, the lines are the same pretty much. You go to FanDuel, you go to DraftKings, you go to Barstool, you go to MGM. You're going to get basically the same line, especially on big games. And even in the case where, you know, you, you change the line or you try to attract new people in, that just brings in people for that bet. You know, I think a lot of users are getting very used to having multiple accounts. Uh, so they just go where the price is the best. And so uh, it's very difficult for these companies to differentiate with each other. Uh, the only way so far that they figured out to do it to attract new gamblers to their platforms is through these promos that cost so much money. Uh, so it's almost like DraftKings and FanDuel have found a way to turn you know, one of the most uh, old school, historically profitable operations <laughs> in history, and that is accepting sports bets and turning it into a money loser. Uh, and so th that's a tough spot to be when you're trying to win an entire nation over to just your platform. Yeah, Andy, when you think about the NFL playoffs leading up to the Super Bowl, and then you think about 
you know, February turning into March and March yeah. madness. It's like an Irish bar on St. Patrick's Day. You better be making money during these times yeah. or avenge or or that's a big red flag, correct? I mean, these are the times when these companies, these casinos have to be making hay, correct? Yeah, this is their Black Friday, absolutely. I think, you know, from from, you know, just like he talks about football playoffs all the way through March Madness is kind of it. I do think that one thing, you know, I tend to overlook, we tend to overlook as investors is that there is an opportunity for these companies to expand what their customers bet on. Uh, you know, they can make baseball, they can make, uh, you know, year round soccer, they can make a lot of the, you know, horse racing, they can make people into more active and avid betters than they are through good user engagement on the platform, something that you know the typical casino bookmaker cannot do. Uh, but it, I have yet to see proof that either company, e any of these companies is exceptionally good at that. I think that's going to be the key for growth for one of these companies is to not just ride the tailwind of sports betting improving and throw out a bunch of promos. I think you've got to take that list that you build and turn them into a more active gambler with more, uh, you know, fun kind of interesting ways to bet year round. Yeah. Can you imagine Andy trying to bet on a soccer game? What's the line? <laughs> a half for every game. Yeah. The, 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 it's a half a point every game in a soccer game. It's got to be crazy. How far do you have to go to be betting on soccer? Andy Swan, thanks for coming yeah. on as always. Have a great day. That's Andy Swan, the co-founder of likefolio.com. Now let's get to our